Hi, everybody. Tom Stewart here with Clean Business Today. I'm with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. I'm looking. Is your cat up there today? No, and I'm glad because you see my monitors? Oh, yeah. She knocked them both, she knocked them both over today trying to get up there. I'm like, oh, Olivia, what are you doing, girl? Bad so, kitty. I know. So she's been banished to the hallway for a few minutes. She'll probably Thank scratch you. Did you, did you say any dirty words? You know I don't say any dirty words. <laughs> I know. Do you think that? Do you, do you, honestly, do you think them? I do. Yes. I didn't used to until I, until I started watching um, cable TV. But there are a lot of swear words on cable TV, and they get into your head. And yeah. so, yeah, sometimes I do. I When they say it on TV, I... I automatically put the right word, Liz right word, and then in my head I do the same thing. I can I correct them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my my, my so daughter. So you what came here for, right? <laughs> my daughter was sharing. Some, my daughter was sharing some Netflix uh, stand-up comedy with me last night, and. I guess I don't know. I mean, it's all over the board, but I guess there's some people who, you know, if there's not a four letter word in it. It's not funny. And it's just like, and you know, I, yeah, I'm, nobody's that never, no, you know, I, 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 I've been known to indulge in really once in a while, but I can't hear it that way. Okay. Um, when uh, Linda wants to know, um, am I from the South? I'm not. Um, no, I don't know why I say y'all. I say y'all a lot. I'm not sure why. I also say a, eh? and I'm not from Canada either. So I, <laughs> I guess I just pick up on these things that I think are good and take them over. I have no idea why. Y'all's eh? a pretty cool word, isn't it? It's more efficient than you all. Y'all ought to be a real word. Yeah, I agree. Y'all is a perfect word. I, I say it. And it's, Y'all is good because it encompasses genders and uh, everything. You don't have to say, like, you can't say, hey, guys, and some people are offended. Hey, ladies, some people are offended. Hey, y'all works. You guys. Y'all just works. And it's punctuation. <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> hey, Denise. Liz. Okay. Liz, can I tell it like it is? Yeah, please, Tom, do tell it like it is today. Okay. One of the issues that came up or questions that came up on yesterday's uh, Facebook Live was, I guess somebody's application, PPP application, had a question about are all your employees in your state? Um, I guess the question was, do the employees have to be in your state in order to, to be you know part of your PPP funds? Um, I talked to my CPA about that. And he um, he went back and read the regs, and it was his interpretation that you know you had to be domiciled in the United States. You had to be be you know United in, you know in the United States, but being a particular state in the you know the, in the, of, of of wherever your, your your business is located doesn't make any sense because some businesses work in multiple states and. There's some parts of the country, say the New York area, that you might work in, in Manhattan, but you live in Connecticut or New Jersey and you're driving back and forth. So if it was limited to you had to work and live in that state in order to, to be qualified for the for the for the PPP for that employer, that that would make a lot of sense. So it didn't really it didn't really pass the make sense test and it uh, didn't seem to say anything in the regs that, that would indicate that. So I think that as long as the person is domiciled in the United States, you're good. I like it. Thanks, Tom. I think that's super helpful when we actually can get some answers to some questions because there are still so many things that we don't have answers to, which is bringing me to something that um, I'm wondering about. We were supposed to be getting the answers to a lot of these questions and the details today. Tuesday, they said, right? April 28th, that was the big date. And so where are those? I haven't heard hiding her hair. Have you? 
Nope. We were supposed nope. to be getting the EIDL emergency funds in three days. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that one. That was. Did anybody really believe that, though? Come on. I didn't believe that. You know what? I am kind of gullible, and you you play you play me a lot, Liz. You'll like, jerk true. my chain, and I'm and it's yeah. True. You tell you know I'm a, I'm a literal person. You tell me three days, yeah, okay, I'm good with it. I mean, why would the government lie to me, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Tom, I have this really cool. Antiseptic that you might, I'm not antiseptic, disinfectant that, 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 that you might should, want to try internally. <laughs> drink, yeah. Uh, Sarah just ran her second PPP. Did you see that? And it's more than her revenue. <laughs> she says she can't get used to it. It's making her anxious. Wow. Uh, oh, you said you that, ran. That is high. Did, does that mean you got the monies or you got approved for the monies or? No, I believe that she's got her, her her PPP, and now this is her second payroll using PPP oh, money. second payroll. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Crazy time. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that I, I hadn't even considered that, Sarah. That, that would be crazy. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's see. We, I had a couple of things. I really wish I would have written them down today. Yeah, she, she, Sarah says she's had it for two weeks. Good good going, girl, that you're uh, uh, using up those funds. What are you spending your TPB dollars on? I'm guessing a lot of training since it's so much higher than your income, than your revenue. Wilson, let us know what that's all about. Um, I had another, I did have a question that I wanted to ask you about, Tom. So let me see my notes, see if I can find it. Somebody had asked me something in one of MMA groups today. And I said, hmm, I'll ask Tom today on the smart business moves. But you guess what? It's going to be hard for me to do that because I didn't write it down. So hopefully I'll remember it and, and remember it and uh, be able to ask about it. In a couple of weeks. You'll think of it tonight. Probably will. So and we can do it tomorrow. Don't, don't, yeah, don't put your phone close to your bed, though, because I don't want that box that I send to wake you up. Hey, okay. Linda. All right, what does Sarah got? Training, admin help, organizing the office, door hangers, and lots of 50% off cleanings to gain more clients. Good. Um, I know one company that started doing a lot of um, free cleanings. Uh, so what he was doing is some free cleanings and then also some 50% off cleanings. And they are now um, pretty quickly transitioning into uh, recurring jobs. So I, I know a lot of times when we're doing this stuff, it seems scary, like, oh, just giving away the farm. And how am I going to turn this around? How am I ever going to make money? I mean, gosh, it, getting five recurring clients in this climate right now, that's pretty darn good, I think. I mean, I'm not sure you can be expecting a whole heck of a lot more than that right now, right? That's true. This just a different type of marketing. It's going to be it's going to be a heavy lift. I mean, you still got a lot of people out there that are concerned about the virus, and on top of that, I'm I'm starting to hear more. It'd be interesting to hear from from some other people, but I'm starting to hear more about clients saying that, "Hey, I lost my job. I'm concerned about my job. I think I need to." start cutting back and saving money so you you take both of those things and you lay them together that's uh that's a pretty stiff headwind that, that we're going to be dealing with for a while yeah yeah we are definitely going to be fighting that how is it how is the um all the problems in texas the oil problems how do you think that's impacting things tom oh that's got to be terrible you know uh, oil's around what ten dollars a barrel give or take i mean it's flying all over the place but it, it's oil is less than what they can afford to pump it domestically so 
you know, last time this happened, there's a lot of people that, that lose their jobs in the oil industry. And there's a lot of people in Texas that their livelihood and income is driven from the, from the oil industry. So that's a, that's an additional particular problem that uh, oil states are, are, are going to be dealing with. Yeah. I know that that I, I know a couple of people that are in Texas. You you also know some people that are in Texas yeah. and with cleaning businesses and thinking it, it must be a, a pretty big concern there. I, I know it is actually for, for some of the people that I know. Um, let's see. So Leslie says she's still not cleaning residential. Um, I, I did want to talk about uh, states opening up and um, governments opening up a little bit too. Let me let me see what we have here real quick though. Amelia, I applied for PPP, but I'm confused. We are currently not working. My ladies are collecting unemployment. Do I still pay them if I get approved for the loan? Okay, do you wanna you wanna hit that one, Tom, and I'll read the rest of these. Read the question again, Liz. Okay. Uh, so basically, she's just saying that she got her PPP. Her right. People are collecting unemployment, and she wants to know if she still pays them if she gets approved for the loan. So it's kind of a, a bigger yeah. answer, right? right? If they're, if they're, yeah, if they're drawing unemployment, then I guess the question is, are you going to bring them back to work or not? Do you have homes to clean? Do you have something for them to do? I mean, if if you don't you don't pay them if they're not employed, if you offer them, them jo their job back, then, you know, you start paying them then. But I guess you would want to have something positive for them to do. Like uh, Sarah was saying, she's doing training. She's doing some door hangers. She's doing some discount cleaning. So you would need a plan for, for, for them to do something. And if, you know, it's complicated because people oftentimes are making more money on unemployment with the $600 coming from the federal government than what they would be working. So you've got options there. Do you want to try to do the, the job share thing where you're working a part time, but they can still get some state unemployment so they can get their $600? Do you bring them back full time? And if you do, you know, are they going to, to not be happy about it because they're going to be losing their unemployment benefits? And, you know, do you pay a coronavirus hazardous pay bonus? I mean, there's all kinds of variations of that, but, uh, you know, they don't get their unemployment and you pay them at the same time. No. Mm -hmm. But if you have that PPP money that you want to take advantage of, then you're going to have to pull some people off of unemployment, at least partially off of unemployment mm -hmm. to be able to get some work done. So you, yeah. you can't have can't have both. They can't be completely on unemployment and getting paid from you. That the government doesn't want that. If it's an option to go, if it's, if you have the option to start cleaning homes and if you're comfortable doing that, then that would be part of your answer that you want to get jobs on the schedule and have your people come back to, to, to clean them. Yep. Uh, so Robin wants to know, when does the $600, weekly, $600 weekly unemployment benefit expire? So... Uh, that, that's a great question. So I know it lasts for 12 weeks, you, but is it, it? Yeah. So once you start getting it's 12 weeks per person, it's not running like from January, uh, obviously not January, but April 1st through July 31st or something like that. Right. Or June 31st. That's a, that's a, it no? is a good question. Um, I don't have an answer, but come back tomorrow and we will. I, I like that. I, I don't, think it's do. time, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. It's nothing that's going to be influencing your decision here over the next couple of months. It's going to be an option for the foreseeable future. But, but we'll get you an answer to that. All right. And Linda, you applied for the SBA loan and never heard anything. Um, I'm guessing you're talking about the idle. So um, I would check in with the bank. Oh, the SBA loan. Yeah, so I guess I would. So what do you want to do? If you haven't heard anything from SBA at all, Tom, you can't really get your portal. Uh, Call yes, the idle funds, they've, yeah, they've stopped um, accepting applications for the idle. Since you already applied, Linda, 
I would assume that you're in the pipeline right now and that you're kind of still doing a waiting game. Do you have a phone number, Tom? I do. You could make a call. I've got that right, on. So Rosemary, and Rosemary's would, throwing a we, date out here too. We assume we, we assume you would have an application number from the idle application, and that will be an important thing to have. And with that, you can dial this number. Oops. All right, so we're, we're getting two pieces of information. Rosemary is saying July 25th for the federal monies, and Linda Cavesos is saying the $600 ends July 31st. It started the week of March 29th for everyone. It's not based on individual filing. Oh, okay. Okay, that, that's great information. I did not know that, so really Thank good to you. have. Yeah, thanks for posting that number, Tom. So there's your SBA number. Um, Linda, go ahead and use that and give them a call and see what you can find out. That says um, to me, but it's the SBA number, yeah. And have your um, application number handy because they're going to ask for that. Uh, Cindy, my PPP went to underwriters today. I was wondering how long it takes for it to hit the bank. Do you know about that, Tom? How long does it take the PPP monies to hit the bank when they're approved? Uh, after it goes to underwriting. Um, That's shit. Well, to once, once, once you're approved, the bank has up to 10 days to get you the money and different banks do it differently. Some of them will have something that looks more like a formal closing process and you'll talk to them in terms of what day you want the monies to hit the bank. Others will just, as soon as they get the funds, they'll shove it in your account and you'll wake up one morning and look at the bank and there's, there's a bunch of money there. So there's no... The best way to get that, the answer to that question is to, to talk to the particular bank that you're working with and, and, and find out what their procedure is. And I, I, I would advise doing that because, you know, in one instance we didn't and, and we didn't like, you know, we found out the hard way. Yeah, finding out in advance is much better. Uh, Tom, we talked yesterday about workers' comp insurance, whether or not it was going to be considered a payroll cost. What did we come up with there? It wasn't literally written in the reg that, that we had. Um, I talked to my CPA about it and he says that there's still a lot of fuzzy math here that at the end of the day, we're not going to know until we get deeper into the process. But, you know, we, based on the, the way the reg was written and the one that we shared yesterday, and I could, pull that up maybe and find that and share that again. It would not be safe to assume that it is, but you're going to be paying it anyway. Right. So at the, at the, you know, end of this whole reconciliation process, you're going to be negotiating with your bank. Hopefully you'll, we'll have clearer, clearer rules and clear set of, 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 of rules. So, so we would know the answer to that when, when we're, we're trying to reconcile how much of, of those PPP funds are going to, to be treated as a grant. So I was thinking about that a little bit today, Tom, and the banks are going to be the ones that are going to be kind of auditing those monies and um, deciding what is um, approved and what isn't, right? That's that's the understanding? Yes. Okay, yeah. so with, with that understanding, why, what what benefit would the bank have to not approve any of your monies? The other what, part of the understanding that? is after they approve it, ultimately the federal government is going to be looking at everything that they approved and making some determination if they agree or not. And if they disagree, then the federal government... The federal government, basically the banks are loaning us money and the federal government is going to reimburse the banks. Right. So if the federal government doesn't agree with what the bank decided, then the bank is the one that loses. They're the ones that don't get their money back. 
So they're, they're just covering their butts to make sure that everything, they're not just going to assume that they're getting all of their money back. They're, they're assuming that the government is going to do a really good job of auditing those monies and giving back, uh, giving the reimbursing the bank only for those that are very strictly followed as, as long as the, the um, law was very strictly followed. Okay. That makes sense to me. It's kind of a scary thing. If you think about it, I mean, they're going to be real. I would be real conservative. The banks are going to be real conservative because this is first time we've said it today, an unprecedented event. So there really isn't a lot of, well, this is the way they've always done it in the past. So, you know, there's a yeah. lot of, we just don't know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bridget wants to know about, has anyone heard anything about the ability to roll the PPP into the, uh, into the idol? So we had talked about how that works. Um, you can get both, but only, only, how does it work, Tom? It's the $10,000. The $10,000 out of the idol comes out of your PPP. Yeah, just the advanced portion, that 10, 10 grand. So if that, it's kind of, you can't double dip on that 10 grand, basically. Right. You're only going to get it once. You can't double uh, dip on much of anything, actually. It's kind of like the uh, sick pay or the um, you know paid family medical leave. You can't take the tax deductions and the PPP, too. It's got to be one or the other on the dollar side. Yeah. All right. So Robin's asking again, Tom. Somehow we're not getting this clearly enough. He wants to know, is workman's comp a payroll cost or an unforgivable insurance cost? This is what we know. This is the reg as it's currently written. And if you read that, it doesn't say that workers' comp insurance is included as part of the forgivable PPP loan. It mentions insurance. Most people are interpreting that as health insurance. It's a little bit ambiguous, actually. I mean, you could- uh, with, the comma, with the comma there, it does kind of, eh. Payment of group healthcare benefits, including insurance premiums. Yeah. And payment of state and local tax assess. Yeah. So, uh, so it looks like no. Well, this falls under, you know, we, we talked about it, you know, there was a, there, you know, there's a possibility that, yeah, but this really isn't, it, it isn't going to really affect, it shouldn't, in my mind, it really doesn't affect what decisions we're going to be making as cleaning business owners. It's like, well, if it's not going to be part of the PPP, I'm not going to pay my workers' comp insurance. You're going to pay it anyway. <laughs> Hey, you have no option there. So, so pay it. And at the end, when we're reconciling with the bank and going through the process of seeing what, you know, is included and what is it. And at this point, we don't even know what that process is going to look like. Right. <laughs> because it's unprecedented. Well, it's never happened before. Which is what Marcia is saying. And it's all subject to change at any time, which yeah. we've seen happen too. Right. So, um, and Debbie, how do you apply for the idol? Well, you can, you apply through your bank, but it sounds like the they're not accepting applications for the idol anymore. Is that right? Yeah, Tom? Is that what you yeah heard? that's my understanding. The uh, legislation that passed late last week included another sixty billion dollars for idol, but the uh, SBA stopped taking applications. So. The, the, the thinking is, the assumption is that that they've already got enough applications to burn up that extra $60 billion that they've been allocated. So if you've got your application in, use that 800 number that, that we posted earlier. It's an 877 number, that toll-free number, and hit them up and find out what's going on. Make sure you have your application number handy and... Um, 
Where'd that number go? Here we go. Up a little bit. There we go. That number right there is your SBA number. And um, with your with your application number, just ask them, hey, you know. And they're gonna ask, did you get an email? And say, I don't, I haven't seen an email. So I get a lot of spam. I mean, you know, it's very possible that you can get an email and, and, and see, right? I mean, every day, you know, people say, did you see the email I sent you? What email? I, you know, I missed it. I get a lot of emails. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Could you talk for me? <laughs> And they will, and they're very nice people. And you are asking them to um, send you the link to your portal is what you're looking for. That's so, right. Yes. I want, I'm that, hoping you can help me with the link to my portal. And that's what you're getting. And then they'll give you a link. You go into your portal. It has your name. It tells you how much money that they're looking at, approving you for, etc. cetera and gives you the option if you want to um, accept it or if you want to change the amount. Um, so yeah, give it a shot. If, if you've already done it, especially, uh, <laughs> contact them and find out. Worst, worst case scenario is that it, it's not, that it, it's, you're not gonna get it yet. But if you've got an application in, chances are pretty good that you're going to be on the list. They just, you know, open up all of these new funds to cover the ones that have already come through. So the thinking is that if you've already applied, the chances are good you're going to get the money. I don't know if that helps or not, but yay. Um, Sarah was saying how it is um, really stressful because she's paying all this money. Like she said, I don't know if you guys saw this, but her payroll was more than her revenue for two um, pay periods. And she's like, she's doing this in the hope that it really is going to be forgiven because these are monies that she would not have spent otherwise, obviously, right? Who's going to, who's going to pay more in payroll than they're getting in revenue, <laughs> right? If it's not getting forgiven. You're not going to do that. Oh, so she's it, like, oh, it has happened, but it's not, it's not something it's very sustainable. Yeah. You don't want to make a habit of that. Yeah. Please don't. Why do you have to pull memories, Tom, when, um, payroll, I'm not going to talk about the date, but payroll was 101% of revenue. You know, when, yeah. when you're when you're startup, you know that's and and honestly, now for if if your businesses are completely closed and you're starting to bring customers back on the schedule, it's very possible that you're going to have to spend more money in payroll than what revenue you're generating just to have the resources available to kind of get more customers on the schedule. Yeah. Get a little bit of momentum going. Uh, yeah, Robin, that's what they um, that a lot of people have said that the people are that when you call the SBA, they're saying, wait until you get an email from them. Um, uh, this is this phone number is kind of a a way to kind of short circuit their their uh, their process. But you have to be diligent. You have to keep bugging them. You have to call back and call back and call back. Um, and it doesn't always work. I mean, I've heard of some people that have called multiple times and they've still gotten the same answers. I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Or yes, I see that you are in the approval status right now. Or um, it looks like you're set to be getting an email within the next three days. These are all answers that I've heard people get. And then three minutes later, they get the answer of, oh, sure, I can send you your link. Here you go. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, let's see. Have we, have we shared the actual URL to the portal? I don't think that we have, have we? Mm, we may have on that first day, Tom, but it's time to do it again. Well, so, that'd be great. This here. Uh, up in a minute while you're doing that oh there it is good this uh this url here actually takes you to the 
sign into your account to access your SBA economic injury disaster loan portal. So here, I'll share my screen for a minute because this is a trick too that uh, might be useful. If you see here, it says, forgot your password. So if you know the email you used when you did your initial application and the one that they sent the uh, application number back on, you can use that email and say, I forgot my password. And if you have a login, they'll basically reset your password for you. And then you'll be able to get in. It doesn't work all the time, but I, I know people who have basically gotten in this way that they hadn't been able to get in previously. Just another, another trick. Linda wants to know, Tom, what type of collateral does the SBA want if your idle request is more than 25K? That is part of the legislation. It's my understanding that they really haven't been asking for that. I'm not aware of anybody. Does anybody know of anybody who had to put up collateral? I've talked to some people who've gotten some pretty substantial loans and weren't really asked for anything. I, I didn't get anything at all. Sarah is saying for her, they said that they would own her business and business assets. <laughs> okay. Huh. That's that's substantial. <laughs> How many vacuum okay. cleaners do you have? <laughs> hey, uh, Stephanie says none. They didn't ask her for any collateral. Yeah, they didn't ask me for anything either. I I just signed my little name and was on my merry way. Uh, Linda is saying, Tom, this is for you, I think. I signed up for your class, home cleaning, and paid the fee, and it starts right away. Is that the full program? I don't think it is. Not sure which, not sure exactly what you're talking about here, Linda. Are you talking about the COVID training? Uh oh, my phone's going down. Are you talking about the COVID 19 training? Or if you're talking about the professional house cleaning training, that is not available yet. Is it time to be successful? The only um, class that we have out there is the uh, the COVID-19 training. And when you sign up for that, there's two sessions, two classes. Each one of those is like an hour and a half. And then there's the uh, the test at the end. And all of that's within the e-learning platform. You're, if you're seeing something else, let us know what that is, Linda, because I'm not exactly sure. What, what you're asking there. Sorry. You know, you really recognize when you're on these, she says, yes, on modern cleaning, yes. That must be the COVID training then, Tom. Yeah. And did you pay $39, Linda? If you paid $39, then that would be the training. It comes in two, two modules, I guess. Is that what you call them, Tom? Two modules? Two classes. Two, two classes. classes. And then at the end of the second class, you'll be given the, yes, it has the test. Yep. Yep. That's the COVID-19 training. Is that the full program? Yep. It is. It's um, both classes are 90 minutes a piece. So it's a total of three hours for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I am, um, tired of money talk because I don't have my PPP. I probably wouldn't be as tired of it if I have my PPP money. Uh, is that through you guys? Yes. Uh, are you talking about the COVID-19 training? I'm guessing you are because the PPP is not coming through us. <laughs> so no. yeah, I'm guessing the COVID-19. Um, yeah, that is through Modern Cleaning, moderncleaning.com. Uh, okay. So, you know, Matt's going to be joining us tomorrow and we're going to be talking about 
putting presentations together, I guess, training some, some various techniques to do, you know, your, your do it yourself training material. Matt spends some time doing that. And, uh, I think he's going to be demonstrating PowerPoint, how to narrate a PowerPoint, and who knows what other tricks he has up his sleeve, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that was on the schedule. Yeah, it is. I, I'm super excited, actually, to see that. What what was it, tomorrow or Thursday? Wednesday. Oh, no. I'm sorry. We I have a presentation in an MMA group on Thursday. So I was, <laughs> I was that. Yeah, sorry. Oh, days are, uh, you, you guys are like me, right? Your days and your all your different stuff is all confusing because everything's so different right now. Uh, so I did want to talk about, yeah, what's the matter, Tom? No, I'm just saying, you, you've, you've been behind all day. Really? It is ridiculous. This day has been crazy for me. Thank you, Leslie. I'm, I'm glad that it's happening to you, too. I have been... I've been late to every single thing that I was supposed to be at today, except for this call with Tom. Why would you be? Well, you were kind of late for this because you were in the wrong place. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I was late for this, too. Sorry. Yeah. Why would, you, <laughs> why, would you be happy, why would you be happy that Leslie's been late today, too? Yeah, she's making me feel better. I'm like, thanks, Leslie, that it's not just me. Anybody else uh, out there late too? Make let's make Liz feel really good. <laughs> Marsha, yeah, she says Marsha seven weeks of Mondays. All right, so just to be clear, Leslie, you know how we're late every day to go live on this call or on this Facebook Live? That is not me. That is Tom enjoying the pressure. Like today, we're like, okay. I said, okay, hey, we need to get on. It's two oh one or five oh one your time. He's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talked for seven more minutes. That's, Tom, we are running out of time. They're going to kick us out. What time do we have to be on, Tom, before they kick us out? We, we, yeah, we got what did we minutes. learn by experience? Basically the whole thing shuts down and we have to yeah. do another meeting and you have to schedule like 10 minutes in advance. So, you know, we basically we basically miss the bus if, if, if we don't uh, yeah. start up in time. Do you want to know how we know that? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We lived did. it, lived it. Yeah, I like the seven weeks of Mondays. I'm with you, Marsha, right there. And Linda, out of shape without the gym. Oh, yeah, you have an exercise at home, not the same thing at all. Yeah, uh, Andra, what day is it? <laughs> I think it's Tuesday. Yes, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. I know. See, Leslie's one of those people, she's on at exactly well, she's on my time zone. So she's on at two o'clock waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> until we get there at 208, mostly. Yeah. That's all Tom. That is all Tom. Well, it's, <laughs> the last, it's, it's the last minute preparations for the finer points to make sure that we're bringing as much useful information as we can. So, I mean, it's not like it. We're just talking about the weather and, you know, the ball, game. ball games to talk about. That's true. Well, was it 209 today, Leslie? I, I We tried to go live at 208. It might have taken, it, it might have been at the tail end of the 208. It still said 208 on our, our clock. Yeah. You know, here's the problem. You come in at 208, you know we're going to have started at 201. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's a game. Tom's playing some mind games with us. Wants to keep us jumping. That's what that is. Hey, Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit? I know you don't have a lot more information about the uh, professional house cleaning training program, but maybe give a little bit of info about that. Oh, I did want to talk about a lot of places are talking about opening up too over the course of the the weekend, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that and if there's anything. It felt like 220. <laughs> Leslie says it felt like 220. I know, right, Leslie? That's what it feels like to me when I'm like, that's 201, 202, 203. <laughs> he's not laughing. You see how he's not laughing? He's like, I'm not this is serious. I'm, I'm not even, I'm I'm not even listening. <laughs> 
Am I supposed to be getting transplanted? <laughs> All right. Uh, Marsh, Marsh, you can't wait to talk about the weather again because everything's mm. just COVID, COVID, COVID. Mm. Yeah, nobody's talking about the weather. It's true. It's I do have a Facebook there. friend that does. You know, you, you, guys, you guys realize we're we'll talking about COVID for a long, long time. I mean, it's not going away in, in, in two weeks or two months and it's going to be floating around out there for, 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 for several years until we come up with a vaccine and make enough of the vaccine. Because even when you come up with a vaccine, then, I mean, there's like 300 plus million people in this country and several, what, 7 billion in the world. I even forget that number, but it's a ton of people and not everybody has to get vaccinated, but you got to get a good number of them to get the whole herd immunity thing going. And just the time it takes to brew that stuff up, it's going to take, take months and months and then you got to distribute it and then you got to administer it. And, you know, I've, I've been, been doing some reading from some fairly smart people and if everything, if everything lines up, okay, you know, maybe in three years we can actually have enough people vaccinated to where, we can go to a restaurant again or a baseball game again or the other things that we're used to doing without worrying about social distancing and where's your mask and, you know, is somebody, you know, going to sneeze on me. I heard they're actually opening restaurants in um, uh, Texas. Yeah. Uh, starting, starting Monday, which is kind of freaking me out because I think Texas has only been shut down for like, two weeks, two and a half weeks. They were one of the last places to shut down and now they're one of the first to open up. It's going to be interesting to see how the consumer responds to that. You know, first of all, the restaurants are going to have to have a different layout. They're going to have to spread the tables out and, you know, try to do more to yeah. do the whole social distancing thing. You know, or is the wait staff going to be wearing face masks? So they're going to, I mean, you can't eat with a face mask on or at least it would be kind of awkward anyway. You know, the talks I've, I've, I've seen some layouts where some restaurants are thinking about putting up like plexiglass shields and things like that to kind of block more one booth from oh, the okay. table and so on and so forth. And, you know, the concern that stems from all of that is that it's just going to be so creepy that nobody is like, you know, this is just weird. I just didn't go home and, and, and eat. And yeah, no, not me, Tom. I'm hitting the restaurant. Yeah, I, I need food that. That that is cooked by other people. Yes. And you're okay. <laughs> and you're okay if your 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 you know waiter's hat wearing a uh, face mask and you're setting in some type of plexiglass bubble. I don't need the plexiglass bubble. I I, I don't need the bubble. Well, but, that might not be an option. Yeah. This might be the way it's laid out. If you're gonna, you know, I don't know. Well, if it's gonna be interesting, and I, you know, let's hope for the best. And these are, the, these are all of the things, though, in terms of smart business moves that we as business owners need to be thinking about because the, what's happening in the restaurants, what's happening in travel and leisure, what's happening in hotels, what's happening in retail, the number of retail, you know, who's going to the mall to shop anymore. And there's a number of really big retailers that are missing bond payments that are, you know, looking at, at going into uh, to bankruptcy in some form or fashion. All of that affects us in multiple ways. It affects the economy. People lose their jobs. Those are fewer clients. And on the flip side, you know, people lose their jobs. They're going to be looking for jobs and we've got good jobs. And, you know, the jobs that we have might look a whole lot better in the future than what they have in the past because there's just going to be fewer of them out there for the foreseeable future. So, well, and we're also going to be seen in a different light, right? People, our, our job is going to be seen as more necessary versus um, just a, a frivolity, which in the past it has been seen that way by a lot of people. Um, are you guys adding extra money for the added cleaning and the PPP, PPE? So I can tell you, Andrew, that I have heard everything from um, people adding nothing extra to people adding almost, double, almost doubling their um, initial cleaning fee to come back. And I've heard everything in between. Uh, my favorite thing that I have heard 
is um, offering an incentive for people to sign on early. And um, the, the incentive is no initial startup fee again. So no, no extra money for that first cleaning. If you sign up within whatever, three days or something like that, get back on the schedule right now. Uh, uh, let's see, are you guys adding extra money for the added cleaning and the PPE? So that's, that's that, sorry. Do the PPP and SBA loans cover personal protective equipment? So the PPE would not be covered by the PPP. <laughs> wow. uh, but, yeah, PPP is not covered by the PPP, but it would be covered by the idle. So that, that would be considered an idle expense. Uh, I agree, Marcia, no consumer confidence equals business failure. Yeah, we, we have to have confidence, but we're all building that as we go. So. Um, that's part of what uh, Tom is um, going to present here right now, too, is, is about that exact idea, Marsha, that we have to be um, leading, leading this, this idea of personal and psychological safety or physical and psych psychological safety. So, but we have to know what we're doing. So, Tom, go ahead. I'll keep reading some of these uh, comments while you go ahead and um, introduce about the program a little bit. Okay. I mean, in, moving forward, in order to not only take advantage of this very unique, unprecedented opportunity that, that we have before us in, turn, in, in, in the house cleaning industry, but, you know, to do... The, the, the responsible thing for all of the stakeholders that we have. And I'm talking about our clients. I'm talking about, you know, the people that work for us. I'm just talking about the community as a whole. Um, in order to create the most value, we, we, we need to be providing a level of training where we can be functioning as professionals. And that's what, what the idea behind this program is. And, you know, the short of it is we've got uh, seven different seven different classes in this program that we're going to be offering them through uh, modern cleaning. Uh, the first one is going to be about defining what it is and helping uh, people who are cleaning homes understand what professionalism is and why it's important. A lot of this program and, and, and all of these classes is going to get into the whys behind what it is that we're doing. You know, we get to the point where we're talking about uh, the chemistry and physics, like in class four, we go beyond just reading the label and doing what the instructions say. I mean, that's necessary, that's important, but in order to do that in a way where you're fully committed to doing it, you're doing it consistently, you have an understanding of why the label is telling you what it is that it's telling you. So we're gonna be doing that in this class. It's gonna be uh, seven classes, we're going to be rolling these out starting next Wednesday. The first class is going to launch Wednesday, 12 o'clock Eastern time. It's going to be in our learning management system on uh, Made Central. So it's not critical. I mean, that, that you're right there to do it at the time. You can log in and do it whenever you want. Each class is going to be roughly an hour, give or take, some a little bit more than that. There'll be some uh, what we call knowledge check questions at the end of each section. But once all seven uh, classes are completed in the program, there'll be an exam at the end and successfully completing the exam, the exam will result in a uh, certificate of completion. The entire program uh, for all seven classes is gonna be priced at $99. We're gonna have a bulk pricing similar to what we have with the COVID class. Um, you can take a single class if you want for, for, for $29. Like we said, all seven classes, once they're completed, you can take the certificate or, you know, take the exam and get the certificate for no extra charge. Um, I guess that's the short story. And, you know, we're going to have uh, a little more details here on the days ahead. But uh, that's what we're, we're, we're working towards. And uh, that's what we're going to be uh, launching starting next Wednesday. Somebody asked about yeah. how to pay for it. We don't even have a mechanism to sign up for it yet. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll have that. And it's not like there's limited seating. This is, uh, you know, we can, we can sign up uh, as many people as, as have an interest in doing this. 
Yep. And first class is Wednesday. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah, it'll be uh, Wednesday, 12 o'clock Eastern time. We'll go, we'll, we'll actually post it. We'll actually go live then. Okay, cool. And then does the PPP cover training fees? Uh, actually, the training fees can be covered. You can pay. <laughs> so you can pay your employees to take training. So I don't know about the actual training itself, Tom. Would well, that be covered under the PPP? There's two parts of it. The class itself is questionable. I'm, I, I, would, yeah. I, I would say I wouldn't count on that. But a big part of the cost of the training, a, a larger part when you're doing training, typically when you're investing in training, the biggest cost you have is paying your you know, cleaning professionals for going through the training program. And the salary part of it absolutely would be covered under the PPP. If you were doing this under normal times, yeah, you pay for the training program, but more importantly, you're paying for all the hours. So by the time you roll all of this up, you're probably talking 10 hours between all of the all of the classes and, 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 and the exam, that those 10 hours are being paid for, you know, you could pay for those out of your PPP funds. And 99 per employee, yes. Uh, Leslie, um, Sarah wants to know, is it a daily series? No, it's a series that, I mean, the, the classes are going to be posted in our, our, in our LMS. We may deliver some of it live or maybe some previews live over the next several days. We're still working out some of those, the, the, those details, but for the most part, it's just hard to, the way most people wind up taking these classes and the way they prefer to take the classes is to log in and do it on their own time through the e-learning platform. So that's going to be the primary method of delivery. Yay. All right. Well, Tom, it's th three o'clock or six o'clock. Had we started on time, it would be exactly an hour. <laughs> All right. But so we, we, went, we went way over yesterday, so it's kind of like did. it's kind of like managing your overtime, you know. And if you work more than eight hours one day, you should probably work less, just so you can kind of keep it under forty by the end of the week. Yeah, I think well, we're still. I think I think for the week so far, we've we've got our two hours in. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Tom. Well, way over, way over the two hours. Uh, I will also be talking to you guys over the course of the next, oh, over the course of the week, I'll have a new program that I'm also going to be talking about. This is going to be um, a mastermind accountability group, and it's going to be sort of the beginner mastermind accountability group. So if you've never been in one and you don't really know if you can even handle that level of accountability where you're expected to do what you're supposed to do every single day. Uh, this is kind of a beginner course. And so I'll introduce you to that a little bit later in the week. Uh, Luciana, hi, I signed up for the class. I did the day one and now I cannot log in to go to day two. I'm so confused. Can somebody help me? So she's talking about, you're welcome, Leslie. Uh, and so she's obviously talking about the COVID-19 class mm -hmm. there. Um, I have no idea why she might not be able to log in. We've had, you know, if you're able to log in and take the first class, so you've successfully enrolled, you would use the same email and password in, to log in to take the rest of the class, the second class, and the, uh, and the test. Um, we've had some people get confused because they have multiple emails and they enroll with one email and then come back the next day and forget which email that they enrolled in. And um, I've had some people that, that, that forget what their password is, but you can request to change your password there. Um, I would suggest just to double check all your, your emails. And if, if, if none of that uh, works, uh, hit us up, hit us up in Facebook and uh, we'll have our team research it and help you out. 
Good luck, Luciana. I, I'm guessing it'll work for you. It's been working for everybody else. So uh, the, the multiple emails has uh, been a problem for more more people than we, we thought it would be a problem for. All right. Anything else today that we wanted to talk about, Tom? I never uh, did what my question was. All right. I think we're good. You know, you can take your question and we can do that tomorrow along with, uh, you know, Matt is, is, is scheduled to be with us again. And uh, we'll, we'll go through uh, some of the do-it-yourself training. I mean, training is huge right now, you know, through whoever, what, whichever means you can get it, you know. Um, you're never going to be able, you're never going to be able to train your people as economically as you can right now if, if you've got your PPP funds. Once you get your PPP funds, you're wide open. And, and I don't know anybody who is fully utilizing their workforce that has a full schedule. So you might as well go ahead and train and let, uh, let our federal government uh, cover the salary cost of that. Yeah, they, they want us to be safe, healthy, and employ all our people. So let's do it. Okay. You're welcome, okay. Robin. Okay. Guys, thank you for, for, for taking uh, the time. And uh, this is uh, this is inspiring to us. I appreciate, uh, you know, I think Liz and I get as uh, much benefit out of this as anybody else. I know I do. It's, uh, it, helps I know me I make do. It, it helps me make it through my seven weeks of Mondays. <laughs> uh, we, will, uh, we will see you guys uh, next uh, tomorrow at five. Okay. Have a good day. Thanks. Or at two o'clock for those of you on the on the West Coast. Bye. Bye.